With more than 300,000 horses in Ohio, the economic impact of the equine industry in the state is over $2.8 billion. Much of that value comes from standard bred horse owners, breeders, trainers, and drivers who participate in the sport of harness racing. The mission of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association is to preserve, protect, promote, and serve the entire standard bred industry in Ohio and beyond. To learn more about the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association, go to OHHA.com. That's OHHA.com. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our annual Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association Banquet. As you can tell, we're doing things just a little bit differently this year with remote pre-production work being done. I'm Keith Gissler. I'm going to be your host for the evening. And when Frank Frass asked me to do this uh, presentation, I got a little bit concerned. He said, Keith, can you do like a three-minute humorous monologue? And after watching the late-night show guys like Fallon and Kimmel doing their monologues with no audience, I just wasn't quite sure how I was going to be able to deliver jokes and not get any direct audience response. And then I realized that I've hosted this banquet for the last several years, so I'm used to it. I, uh, I wanted to get a haircut before I came out here. Obviously, we failed at that because all of the sports clips locations here in Northeast Ohio are actually closed due to COVID. Now, when I go to sports clips, I usually get what's called the MVP. It's a haircut, a shampoo, and then a massage afterwards. But with sports clips being closed, there was just no happy ending to that story. But the pandemic has been weird. It's just so much extra time on your hands. It's given me a lot of a chance to uh, reconnect with some of my old friends, Jim Beam and Elijah Craig, and of course, Arturo Fuente and Macanudo. Uh, all of those guys back with me. I got so bored during the pandemic that I actually started jogging. No, I, I didn't. Jogging is the stupidest sport in the history of the world, folks. I know of no sport that combines total mind-numbing boredom with sheer physical agony the way that jogging does. To tell you the truth, I would rather have my retinas massaged with a Roomba before I go jogging. And I'm into that kind of thing because my parents sent me to a Catholic elementary school. I'm Jewish. But they played that cruel trick on me. They sent me to Catholic school. And have you ever noticed how the best Catholic schools are the ones that have the most pain and suffering in their names? Schools with names like Our Lady of Never-Ending Sorrow, Most Sacred Perpetual Back Pain. My parents sent me to Our Lady of the Ever-Festering Cold Sore, Herpes High. Now, our sports teams were nicknamed the Cankers. <laughs> Team mascot was a kid had to dress himself in a giant blistex tube. It was hilarious. But we're here to celebrate racing, not to talk about me and my great physical appearance and great physical condition, although you can tell I've got the COVID-19 in weight gain. We're here to celebrate racing. You know, this state, when the pandemic shut down racing, who was the first state back racing? It was Ohio. Scioto Downs, a couple days later, Northfield Park. Pro protocols were put in place to allow our horsemen to race and to race safely while other states were still twiddling their thumbs. And for the most part, that has been really, really successful. And I've got to give all the credit in the world to the horsemen here. In fact, give yourselves a round of applause because you guys have managed to race through the entire year and that's great. But even the OHHA has been able to adjust and change as things have gone on. Uh, when they realized they couldn't do their county fair outreach racing with the stars, they changed streams and they took the races to the fans. The OHHA through Facebook Live broadcast reached thousands of viewers with dozens of county fair cards from all across the state. We had viewers from Australia, from New Zealand. We had viewers from England, from Scotland, even from Holmes County. I, I don't know where they got their electricity. So the OHHA has just been on the forefront of all of the things that we're doing to make things better uh, for racing. And of course, this year, the 75th Little Brown Jug, uh, we didn't get to see Party Girl Hill race against the boys, but for the first time in 75 years, the Little Brown Jug Society was able to issue an accurate attendance count. But we are here to congratulate the horsemen, so I want to say to all of you, enjoy your evening. We're going to have a great time tonight. Have a good time. Applaud the winners from your living room, from your dining room, from your car, wherever you're watching. Just have a great time. Enjoy. And at this time, it is my distinct honor to introduce the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association President, Steve Bateson. The 2020 year, what can I say? 
good riddance, I think, would be best. Uh, we have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, as we uh, went through some very challenging times, uh, the state of Ohio's two-month shutdown period, I think we all would like to forget. We made it through that. We made it through that with a lot of difficulty and perseverance. I think we recognize what this sport means to all of us. And that shutdown period gave some people time to reflect. Uh, we ask a lot of people. We ask a lot of our OHHA staff. I certainly need to thank those within OHHA. You know, that staff, Sherry Johnson, Linda Nance, Susan Schroeder, Roger Houston, Frank Fraz, our track directors, Brett Merkel, Amy Holler, uh, the OFRC regional coordinators, Todd Brown, Bill Peters, most of all, uh, Renee Mancito for leading the office uh, through these difficult times, working with our lobbyist, Byers and Mitten, Andrew uh, Mitten and Greg Bennett uh, helped us uh, immensely through those times when we were trying to get back to racing. And, you know, without their efforts with the legislators, we probably would not be where we were in such a short amount of time. All those drivers, trainers, and grooms that hung with us those two months and, and did all they could to best take care of those horses uh, and keep those horses ready and fed. Um, in many cases, I think a lot of people thought uh, there wasn't a light at the end of the tunnel. The permit holders, I can't thank them enough. Uh, Hollywood at Dayton, Miami Valley, MGM Northfield Park, Brent Reitz, Dave Bianconi, Caesars El Dorado, Joe Morris, Jason Roth, Anthony Carano. I'd like to point out those two permit holders, El Dorado at Sayota Downs and Northfield Park MGM. When the time came um, and the racing commission and everybody said, are you willing to open without the casino being open? Anthony Carano said yes and gave the go ahead and, and MGM was right there behind him. Without that willingness to be able to open, we were first in the country to open during this pandemic. Those permit holders were critical to getting our horsemen here in the state back up and running. And uh, thank you again to those two permit holders that stepped up and were willing to, uh, to race without the Racino being open. We learned some this summer. We put a big deal of pressure on Trot and Pace Marketing, a group we've worked with a number of years. Huge thank you to Don Holdren and his mother, Teresa Maddox, did a heck of a job, and we were able to expand our marketing efforts. Uh, again, a, a special thank you to the extra effort gentlemen like Frank Fraz and Roger Houston did, along with Susan Schroeder. Uh, when above and beyond, we covered virtually every fair in the state. We found new marketing endeavors with that, um, and I think now we've set the bar pretty high. Uh, we've been able to showcase our product throughout the 66 fairs here in Ohio. We got to see parts of the state that some have never seen, and we also got a little touch of history. New Englander, the new Ohio historian, Tom Pye, gave a good reflection on those little parts and pieces around the state that we were able to exhibit through Trot and Pace Marketing and the efforts that those uh, put forth so that we could all be able to see those fair horses race and compete. The last thank you I need to, to give are to the many, many owners of standard breads that stayed in the sport through this very difficult time. They continued to pay their bill, they continued to hang in there and support those trainers uh, and grooms and drivers that were uh, shut down during those two months. And then they've went out and showed above and beyond how good this Ohio bread is. The yearling sales this year broke record numbers, and those many owners stepped up and bought yearlings that are going to compete in 2021. Some of those 2021 new introductions on the racetrack will include things coming from Long Tom, What the Hill, Down by the Seaside, and Fear the Dragon. We all look forward to seeing the, those new stallions offspring compete in 2021. As I reflect on 2020, Roger asked me to give my 2021 New Year's resolution. So for 2021, 
I want to cherish yesterday's memories, value today's blessings, and look forward to tomorrow's opportunities. May 2021 be a safe, successful season for all of you. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Executive Director of the OHHA, Renee Mancino. Thank you, President Steve Bateson. I echo President Steve Bateson's sentiments regarding those we are thankful for. The OHHA team, which includes the in-office staff, Linda Nance, Sh Sherry Johnson, Susan Schroeder, Frank Fraz, and Roger Houston. The OHHA remote staff, Tom Pye, Brett Merkel, and Amy Holler. The OHHA team knows the respect and gratitude I hold for each of them. The OHHA team makes the load a lot lighter for me, and they are all a pleasure to work alongside every day. And I also want to thank the 37-member Board of Directors, with President Steve Bateson and Vice President Randy Leppard at the helm. The Board of Directors provide their time and effort without compensation or the expectation of a return. Collectively, they all share a common and very valuable trait, a love and passion for harness racing, a drive and desire to keep Ohio at the pinnacle of the sport, and beyond. I would also like to thank Chairman Scott Borgamenke, Executive Director Bill Crawford, and the entire Ohio State Racing Commission. Commissioners Hansen, Winters, Simpson, and Patman, they also showed tireless efforts and flexibility during racing's shutdown and resumption. It was due to their leadership that Ohio was the first to commence live racing in North America. An additional thank you goes to the Ohio Department of Agriculture, to Director Dorothy Palanda and Senior Staff Attorney Morgan Lyles. Without their efforts, live fair racing would not have resumed or even been possible in Ohio. So 2020 racing during a pandemic, what was that like? Horse racing is a live spectator sport. It relies on in-person fans, and equine racehorses are finely tuned athletes. You can't toss the keys on the shelf and leave them in a garage for two months like a race car. Ohio Racing went dark on March 19, 2020 and came back live on May 16, 2020. A loss of 75 live racing days from what is typically a 475 live day schedule yearly at Ohio's paramutual racetracks alone. By the end of the year, with closures, no live spectators, and curfews, the overnight purse pools were down conservatively $16 million by year's end. Within a 10-day period, following the May 16th commen commencement to June 1st, El Dorado Scioto Downs, MGM Northfield, Delaware County Fairgrounds, and the Warren County Fairgrounds qualified 2,071 horses in 273 qualifying races. A huge thank you to all involved in that massive undertaking of qualifying racehorses to race live. When racing commenced, live fans didn't return at the Paramutual racetracks until June 19, 2020. When racing commenced, live fans didn't return to the fairs all summer. The only events hosted at the Ohio Fairs were a junior fair and harness racing. Another thank you to our OFRC regional coordinators, Bill Peters and Todd Brown. In addition to Fair Circuit Secretaries Elwood, Woody Woolham, Lisa Schwartz, and Rod Newhart, they all worked very hard in a coordinated effort to make sure the fairs were well informed of the COVID protocols and were all resolute that the summer fair racing must go on. 2020 still had four paramutual harness racetracks race 400 live days and 66 of Ohio's 67 standard bred racing fairs raced 137 live days for $8.3 million in purse money. In 2020, despite the pandemic, March 15th, 
there were over 2,700 horses nominated to the four fair racing circuits. The OHHA provided $5.7 million to the Ohio Fair Racing System for racing and related expenses, including $12,000 per fair to spend on whatever their fair needed. In 2020, fair racing was the star. From June 15th to October 15th, 2020, Teresa and Don Holden, Trot and Pace Marketing, Frank Fraz, Susan Schroeder, and Tom Pye ran point and digitally produced 81 live fair racing dates and five Saturday night at the races live stream broadcasts. The broadcasts received viewership from 31 states, 13 countries, which included 947,000 people, 133,408 engagements, 318,000 views, 15,000 Facebook comments, and over 1,500 Facebook shares. Referring back to the team effort that keeps Ohio at the pinnacle of the sport, I want to congratulate the team for another job well done despite a difficult year. Although 2020 was a difficult year, in 2020, Ohio led the nation with over $18.1 million in purses paid for Ohio's sire stakes races. Ontario, in second place, paid $15.1 million. Pennsylvania, $11.9 million. New York, $10.2 million. And rounding out the top five, Indiana paid out $9.9 million in state-restricted purses. In 2020, Ohio once again led the nation for the sixth year in a row for mayor, mayor's bread to Ohio stallions. And Ohio was also number one for standard bread fulls produced, number one for the total number of registered owners of standard breads, number one in the country for county fair racing with 66 fairs, and number one for registered stallions with 83 stallions standing at 51 breeding farm locations statewide in 37 counties. 2020 had its challenges and was not without its tears for those we lost both inside and outside the industry statewide to COVID-19. Nothing can compare to that loss. As is often said in the month of March, 2020 came in like a lamb and went out like a lion. Through it all, I am very proud of the team and Team Ohio, Ohio's harness racing participants, and everyone involved in racing in Ohio. They showed a grit and resiliency unmatched in many places, and I am confident that they will come out stronger and continue forward. Hashtag Ohio Strong. Tonight, we join together to celebrate all the Ohio champions. God bless, stay vigilant as we all continue to fight the pandemic and live to race another day. And now please join me in welcoming Dick McClelland, who will introduce our Kaltenbach Award winners as the top Ohio Sayer Stakes trainer and driver. I'm Dick McClellan, chairman of the Standard Bread Development Fund, and it's my honor to present to Chris Page the Kaltenbach Award for the fifth time in seven years for the most money won in the Ohio Sire Stakes program. Wow, what a challenging year it's been. Um, it's a pleasure for me to accept this award. I think this is my fourth year winning the Colin back. Uh, got a good supporting cast. I got a great home team. My, my wife, she's, a, she's, a, she's wonderful. My mom, she still is very in influential and uh, plays a big part in my success and also the owners, the trainers that uh, use me. And also, let's not forget about the grooms. Um, they're there every day putting the hard work in, uh, rubbing. So I uh, want to thank them as well. And it's my honor to present to Ron Burke for the second year in a row, the winning trainer of the Kotlinbach Award for the most money won in the Sire Stakes program in the year 2020. 
thanks a lot for the trainer award. It's a very hard award to win. Uh, there's a lot of great trainers in Ohio and a lot of great stake races. It's become our actually our home away from home and uh, we supported it more this year than ever. And we actually have sires there now and broodmares and uh, we can't wait to race this year and we're excited about the program moving forward. And now it's my honor to introduce Renee Mancino, the executive director of the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association, to present our Caretaker of the Year Award. The Outstanding Groom Award is awarded to an Ohio groom that exemplifies hard work and a dedicated spirit in caring for and tending to her equine athlete's every need and a commitment to Ohio harness horse racing. Tessa Curran found her love of horses while working with her grandpa Curran. Tessa takes great care of the equine athletes in her care and treats every horse as if it were her own. Whether she is taking care of a $5,000 claimer or an open horse, they're treated as her children and in great hands with Tessa Curran. Congratulations to the 2020 Ohio Outstanding Groom, Tessa Curran. Thank you, Renee. I'd also like to thank the Watsons for nominating me for this award. Also thank you to the OHHA for presenting me with Caretaker of the Year Award. I'd also like to thank Kent Sherman, who's actually the first trainer I ever worked for um, when I got into the business. He trained horses for my grandfather, who's been a big part in why I do what I do and why I love it so much. It's been a family and friends kind of uh, partnership. Without them, I definitely wouldn't be here. I'd like to thank Sam and Jody Scalacci because without them along the way, I worked for them for quite a few amount of years. They taught me a lot too on how to take good care of the horses, how to take care of them properly, along with Kent, of course, and a few others. Um, my favorite horse of all time, now Kent will tell you every horse is my favorite horse. That's not true. B-Mart Bill was my favorite horse of all time. But currently my favorite horse is Lucky King, which is owned by the Watsons. Um, and the reason why I love what I do is I've left the business a few times and as cliche as they say, once you get bit with the bug of this harness racing, it's in you. Um, I've left and I've always came back. I used to dread going to work when I worked in a dentist's office or when I worked at a different place, but what I do now, I never dread going to work, even when it's six degrees outside, which seems kind of crazy. It's not really for the faint at heart, but it's what I love, and without it, I don't know where I would be. Um, thank you so much for nominating me, Watsons, and for the OHHA, I would not be here without all of you guys. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Jim Beakey, who will introduce the winner of the Terry Holton Youth Award. It's my privilege to be able to be before you this evening to again present the Terry Holton Youth Award for OHHA. Just as kind of background, Terry Holton, of course, was a very successful owner, trainer, and driver of Standard Breads. He's a native of Newark, Ohio, and uh, was active in OHHA for years. He was uh, vice president. He was a member of the board of directors. He had a successful career that culminated in his being elected in the Ohio Harness Hall of Fame. In 2003, the Terry Holton Youth Award was presented because, or developed, because he was a, such a supporter of youth coming in and developing the next generations into this beloved industry of ours. And the eligibility for this is any youth from the age of 13 to 19 who has been involved in the sport the previous year of the award. And uh, many of our past recipients uh, have grown up in the industry, have come to the industry, and have become owners, trainers, drivers, 
they've learned the business from the ground up. We've had 20 recipients since 2013. Some of the early, early winners were uh, uh, Tyler Smith, Tyler Finch, John Wengard, uh, J.D. Perrin, uh, Niles Winderman. We've had a lot of people 20 years ago and 15 years ago who received the Youth Award fast forward to today and you see how successful they've been in the sport. Uh, some other, other later uh, recipients uh, have, have also show signs of becoming very successful in the industry having won the award. So that's kind of the background of the uh, Terry Holton Youth Award and tonight's winner is and recipient is comes from that mold. He's Noah Kenneth Newman, a 16-year-old sophomore from Streetsboro. Noah is uh, very, very involved in his school activities. He's an athlete. He plays football. He plays golf. Uh, he, baseball is his favorite sport, and he's very good at it. Well, of course, 2020 was, was a year to end them all. And uh, the big thing that had such an effect on everybody is COVID-19. Well, from a, a student standpoint, a school standpoint, uh, obviously, we had a long stretch where schools were closed and all extracurricular activities were, were stopped. And so Noah had an awful lot of opportunity to spend time in the barns, working with the horses and uh, learning from his parents and his grandparents and, and others. He uh, has spent and learned so well and he's contributed so positively to it so that by the time uh, this year starts, he is now training horses. Who knows where Noah Kenneth Newman's career is going to take him? Well, at the same time, folks, his parents have kept him focused on the academics. So Noah's in the process of developing a well-rounded background and hopefully being able to become one of the next generation of success stories in harness racing. So it's a real privilege and and pleasure to be able to present this evening's recipient of the annual Terry Holton Youth Award to Mr. Noah Kenneth Newman. Congratulations, Noah. Oh, one postscript. His stepfather is Scott Cox. His grandfather is Bill Irvine. He's got a real foundation of coming successes in the harness racing business. Great shout out to my grandma this year for nominating me for this award, and I greatly appreciate to her for nominating me, and I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for my father for teaching me all these life skills and whatnot growing up in this business, and teaching me a bunch of skills and whatnot, jogging and training horses, which someday I hope I'll be able to drive and whatnot, which I'm hoping. And a great thank you to the OHHA for nominating me for this award, and great thanks to the to them for choosing me for this award this year. And the one thing I do like about it is it teaches you a bunch of skills and it's been a really, really life changing for me and getting up and getting in a routine every single day, getting up at 5.30 with my dad. And since this whole pandemic hit, uh, I've been out there working with my grandma's horse, working with him, jogging, training, all that. Best part about it is going out and helping my dad and helping them get done early and whatnot, helping us, everybody at the farm, helping them train horses down, jog horses, and I just great thank you to them. Please welcome Scott Hagemeyer, who will present the winner of the Maynard and Stella Hagemeyer Award. Hello, my name is Scott Hagemeyer. I'm joined by my daughter, Lindsay Hagemeyer. We're here to present the Ohio Harness Horsemen Association 2020 Maynard and Stella Hagemeyer Significant Contribution Award. 
were standing at their home in Clarksville, Ohio, right now. The Maynard and Stella Hagemeyer Significant Contribution Award goes to an individual that has made a significant, lifelong contribution to Ohio harness racing. This individual must possess a passion and advocacy for our industry that makes a long-term impact. Maynard, my grandpa, was a trainer, driver, owner, and ultimately founder of Hegemeyer Farms in Clarksville. He served as a director for the OHHA, as well as multiple local government leadership roles. Stella, my grandma, in addition to helping run the farm, served as the clerk of course for multiple county fairs across southwest Ohio for nearly 40 years. In addition, she served as secretary treasurer of the OCRA racing circuit for nearly 28 years. They both spent a lifetime of involvement in Ohio harness racing and passed that passion down to several generations. This year's award goes to a person that embodies the spirit of my grandparents with his many years of dedicated advocacy and involvement in Ohio harness racing. Steve McCoy got involved as an owner in 1982 as a partner with his dad who was also an owner, breeder, and equine veterinarian. Steve is a lawyer by trade with many years experience in contract negotiations and governmental relations. He served on the board of the Ohio Standard Bread Breeders and Owners Association and was vital in merging that group with the OHHA. Steve also served as a director with the USTA. Steve has seen his ups and downs with this industry. As president of the OHHA for seven years, Steve steered this industry towards many of the successes we still see today. He focused his experience to become an instrumental part of implementing legislation of VLTs in Ohio. He still serves the OHHA as Breeder Section Vice Chairman and Advisory Committee member. Steve has set an example of leadership that has made a long-term impact in Ohio harness racing. Please join us in recognizing the 2020 Maynard and Stella Hegemeyer Significant Contribution Award recipient, Mr. Steve McCoy. I am very pleased to be the recipient of this year's Maynard and Stella Hegemeyer Significant Contribution Award. My own re relationship with the, with the Hegemeyer family goes back many years. My father was a large animal veterinarian who was a wizard at palpating mares and Hagemeyer Farms was one of his clients. More than 50 years ago, as a teenager, I rode with my father and helped him and I can remember going to the Hagemeyer Farm uh, to provide services. And even since that time, uh, as recently as maybe 10 years ago, I dropped a mare off at the Hagemeyer Farms on a Sunday morning to be, pal to be palpated and bred, and I was invited to stay for Sunday dinner. So there's always been a great mutual respect between my family and the Hagemeyers. And my observation over the years is that no one has been more loved or respected in this industry than Maynard and Stella Hagemeyer. My understanding is that the criteria for this award is that someone has provided advocacy and lobbying for the good of the standard bred breeding and racing industry. One of my guiding principles over the years that I've spent on the OHHA board, which is roughly 30 now and as president for seven years, was that I always tried to take actions and make decisions that I believed were in the best interests of all the people and horses that are involved in the industry. Because I was president at the time, I had the opportunity to lobby for the VLT legislation, um, which, as you all know, was life-changing for the industry because it completely changed uh, the financial parameters. Uh, this legislation was the most important of any since the simulcast bill in 1995, and because I was president at the time, I had the opportunity to meet with many legislators 
and lobby for the passage of the VLT bill. So because of that, and because of my long relationship with the Hagemeyer family, this award is very, very special to me. Uh, so I thank everyone who was involved in creating this award and in deciding that uh, this year uh, I would be a recipient. I thank you all very much. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the voice, Roger Houston, with the OHHA Service Award. This year's Special Service to Harness Racing Award goes to a man who has been dedicated to serving the many horse people in the state of Ohio. Dale Roof has served on the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association Board of Directors for 42 years, of which 38 years on the Health and Insurance Committee. Every person he has served with says the same thing. Dale is the most dedicated individual to the health and welfare of all horsemen in Ohio. Under Dale's leadership, the men and women involved in racing, no matter whether they be a trainer, a driver, caretaker, or farm hand, has the best insurance program as possible. Many consider the Ohio program the best in the nation for horse people. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's recipient of the Special Service to Harness Racing Award goes to Dale Ruff. Well, I'm happy to accept this award on behalf of the OHHA. Thank you, everybody. And I thank everybody that participated. Thank you. At this time, please welcome my fellow U.S. Harness Raiders Association Ohio Chapter member, Ayers Ratliff, who will present the Ushua Ohio Awards. Hello, everyone. My name is Ayers Ratliff, and it is my pleasure to present the Ohio Chapter of the United States Harness Raiders Association Awards. We start tonight with the future of our sport. The Peter Houghton Memorial Award is given to a young Ohioan who is an up-and-coming star among harness horsemen. This year, we are pleased to give the Peter Houghton Memorial Award to Chris Presley. Chris started his driving career in 2016 and scored his first win on August 12, 2016 at the Hartford Independent Fair in Croton. There, he guided Angela Nicole to a 14-length victory in 159-1. Now 25 years of age, Chris has enjoyed a terrific 2020 season with 75 wins and almost $600,000 in purse earnings. So congratulations to the 2020 Peter Houghton Memorial Award winner, Chris Presley. Down the lane she comes, it's Gypsy K, and Chris Presley, shoulder heels to the field. The Buckwheat's a long shot, Gypsy K. They're on their way home. There's no catching. Metal and Scarlet and Chris Presley. They're on cruise control. I appreciate uh, everybody who voted for me. Um, I'm trying to work pretty hard at it, but it all comes down to opportunities, and there's countless people to thank, but the uh, main people are, you know, Mike Metters, who got me started uh, driving a couple fair horses here and there, and then I went up to drive some Stallion Series horses and then some Sire Stake horses, and people kind of started to take notice that I could hold my own in races if I had the horse. Um, Aaron Hamilton, he... Uh, out at our farm, he gave me a couple opportunities. He really didn't know who I was, and I didn't drive enough for uh, for him to really see what I could do. But he gave me some chances. We we did really well this summer. Um, once again, I'd like to thank all the trainers and owners for giving me the opportunities to drive, and the harness riders for giving me this award. And also like to thank uh, the Midwest Harness Report for getting me an article this earlier this summer, and I think that kind of helped me take off a little bit. Our next award is the Winner Circle Award. That's presented to the Ohioans who have achieved an outstanding accomplishment in the past year. This year's award will be presented to Louise and Jay Weller. The Wellers are the owners of Designer Specs, 
the now three-year-old Philly Trotter, who completed her freshman season a perfect 14 for 14. The daughter of full count was the winningest two-year-old, not only here in Ohio, but in all of North America. She concluded her 2020 season with a gutsy victory in the $40,000 Ohio Fair Championship at MGM Northfield Park. Her winning time of 157-4 was a lifetime best, and the championship win elevated her 2020 earnings to over $56,000. So congratulations to Louise and Jay Weller, our 2020 Winter Circle Award winners. As I race around the upper turn to head for Peter. It is designer specs now by about 15 lengths, but past the stand, it's going to be designer specs. Less than an eighth to go. It's all designer specs. A perfect 13 for 13. Designer specs. Jay and I would like to thank the U.S. Harness Writers Association for this award. Um, we have been blessed this year, as crazy as 2020 has been. We had a phenomenal year with Designer Specs, winning 14 for 14. Just wanted to thank everyone who supported us through the race season. Uh, Ryan Stahl for an excellent drive. Um, all the fans that cheered us on. Um, the OHHA, who did a wonderful job advertising, doing the um, online videos, um, trot and pace marketing. Anyone else you can think of, dear? Mm -hmm. The association. Yeah, just the association and all of, the, all of the folks that are involved in harness racing. Next, it is our pleasure to honor driver trainer Kurt Sugg as the 2020 Rambling Willie Award winner. This award is presented to the Ohioan who has done the most for harness racing over the past two decades. Kurt was born into a harness racing family. He is the son of Hall of Famer Ivan Sugg and Patty Sugg. He has inherited the talent of an all-around horseman. Kurt has won more than 4,600 races as a driver and more than 1,000 victories as a trainer. His career earnings are more than $26 million. Kurt will finish this year with more than 375 driving wins and $2.9 million in purse earnings. Both are career highs, despite missing a significant amount of time due to the COVID shutdown. Kurt has trained and driven world champions, track record holders, sire stake champions, Buckeye Stallion Series champions, and also Ohio Fair champions. He has been a successful horseman for a long time and supports harness racing here in Ohio at all levels. Our 2020 Rambling Willie Award this year goes to Kurt Sugg. On top of the field, it's Don't You Say It with the lead. On the outside, Conley Lane is second. Coming back on the inside, retirement income. But there again, Jason, Kurt Sugg, Don't You Say It. Into the stretch they come. On top, just a Wrangler with the lead. On the outside, Dry Ridge Ace is fading. On the inside, Beach Kisser. To the wire, it's all just a Wrangler and Kurt Sugg. Coming through the stretch, it's all natural Jim and Kurt Sub. I'd like to thank the United States Harness Rice Writers Association for giving me this award. I have to say it was quite a shock uh, when I was driving home from the races one night when Ayers uh, called me to tell me I'd won the award. To be honest, I really don't think I've done that much, uh, but I guess when I heard all the accomplishments, I guess I have accomplished quite a bit more than I think I have in the sport of harness racing. I would like to say that I do not thank Amy Holler though in this award because she keeps nominating me and I didn't win the year she nominated me, but I did win this year when Ayers nominated me. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to enshrine James Bill Daly into the Immortal Hall of Fame. Bill was born on June 6, 1960 in Jamestown, Ohio. At the early age of 16, he began his career in harness racing. Throughout his life, Bill's passion for standard bred horses led him to major successes as an owner, trainer, and driver. 
Since the late 1970s, he recorded at least 1,200 training wins and purse earnings in excess of $12.3 million. As a driver, he made 2,301 trips to the winner circle. He produced multiple Ohio Triple Crown winners and numerous Ohio and Indiana Sire Stake champions, all leading him to receive the Jerry Kaltenbach Memorial Award on several occasions. Bill passed away suddenly in 2018 at the age of 57. It is my pleasure to now introduce Bill's wife, Kim Daly, to accept Bill's introduction into the Immortal Hall of Fame. As a little girl, I thought there was nobody better than my father. I remember having a conversation with him a few years before he passed about why he wasn't in the Hall of Fame yet. It frustrated me to no end. But on this particular occasion, he looked at me and he said, Ash, I'm not going to get in before I die. I didn't want to believe it, but that man was always right. To finally receive this award is nothing short of amazing. Thank you to the U.S. Harness Riders Association, Ohio Chapter, and to the OHHA. It's been no secret that the last two and a half years have been extremely hard on my mother and I. I wish I had the words to express the gratitude we feel for being reminded that Bill Daly is not forgotten and possibly never could be. I also want to take a moment to thank the owners throughout the years, the grooms, Everybody who was a backbone, especially my mom. He wouldn't be receiving this award if she wasn't behind him and beside him the entire time. I love you. <laughs> and thank you for picking up where he left off. He was a great guy, and <laughs> well loved in the business, in the family. We are now at the point of the program when we honor one of the true greats here in the state of Ohio. Today, we add the 47th member to the Ohio Harness Racing Hall of Fame, Virgil Morgan, Jr. Virgil is not just one of the greatest trainers here in the Buckeye State. He's not just one of the greatest trainers in the Midwest, but Virgil Morgan, Jr. is one of the greatest trainers in North America. Virgil was introduced to the sport of harness racing through his uncle, Emery Lewis, and his father, Virgil Morgan, Sr., he bought his first horse at the age of 17 and later started working for trainer Randy Owens before going out on his own in the late 1980s. His horses have won more than 6,700 races and more than $60 million in purse earnings. He has won the training title at El Dorado Cider Downs for an astounding 26 straight years. He has trained some tremendous performers, including Mr. Big, Pet Rock, All-American Captor, Action Broadway, and this year's divisional champions, Street Gossip and Action Uncle. To list his standouts would take hours. Virgil is only 55 years of age and looks to have many more years of success. Please welcome the state of Ohio's newest member of the Hall of Fame, Mr. Virgil Morgan Jr. There's so many people to thank, but I want to thank the Harness Riders Association for, uh, for uh, voting for me. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, 
this has got to be the greatest honor of uh, any trainer in Ohio that, that you can accomplish or have. And, and I can't thank you enough for voting for me. Uh, I've got so many people to thank. And uh, uh, first, uh, young career, Roger Houston. Uh, nobody helped me out more than him. Uh, when I went to the Meadows, he gave me a place to stay. Uh, just a great individual uh, and, and helped me in so many ways uh, early on in my career. My family, uh, my wife, Christine, my kids, Trey and Kiara, uh, they both work for me. They do a great job uh, helping me train. Um, they're, they're a huge part of my operation. Uh, my sister, uh, she's the backbone of, of my business. She's my CPA accountant, uh, my payroll. She, she does it all. W without her, uh, I, I would be in trouble. She, uh, she lets me train the horses and gives me uh, the time to do that, and that's greatly appreciated. Harleen Johnston. Uh, my dad, God rest his soul, uh, started with me uh, with a couple claimers. Uh, he believed in me and invested in me, and uh, uh, I want to thank him and my mom, my biggest fan. Uh, just so many people to thank. Uh, my vets, uh, Woodland Run, John Riker, Bob Buell, they've done the majority of my vet work throughout my whole career. Uh, I want to thank them. Uh, Blacksmith, Dave and Eric Thomas, uh, they've done the majority of my blacksmith work uh, in 37 years. So. Um, uh, we're, I think uh, kind of shows our age a little bit there. I probably shouldn't have mentioned that, but uh, all the drivers that have driven for me, uh, you know, Brett Miller, David Miller, there's just so many to list, uh, so many to thank. Uh, Breeders' Crown wins, uh, Stakes wins, you, you name it. Uh, I want to thank them. And uh, my caretakers, uh, the grooms, uh, they're in the trenches. Uh, I'll put my crew against anybody. Uh, they're, they're just awesome. Uh, you can't run the stable uh, without uh, great grooms, second trainers. Uh, it's not going to happen. And I want to greatly, uh, they're greatly appreciated and I want to thank them. Um, my owners, uh, they're second to none. Uh, they invest in me. They believe in me. And uh, there's so many. I don't want to offend anybody. There's so many to mention. Um, but uh, uh, I, I want to thank all of them uh, and, uh, you know, for, for believing in me and investing in me. And, uh and then last but not least, management in Ohio. Anybody who knows me knows I love to race in Ohio. I'm passionate about the racing here. And, uh, you know, Cider Downs, Jason Roth and Stacy Cahill. Um, um, in Northfield Park, Dave Bianconi. Uh, he's a, a good Cleveland Browns friend of mine, but also an excellent uh, race secretary. And Greg Kydell. Uh I'll put that crew up against anybody when it comes to race secretaries. And um, you know, we've, we've, but I've butted heads with all of them entering horses. Any trainer knows that, but, uh, I think they all, uh, are passionate and, uh, management at these tracks. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a great thing we have and a great opportunity right now. And, uh, I think they can help keep it rolling. Um, anyway, uh, thanks to all those people. Um, and, uh, I, uh, I, uh, am elated. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Virgil Morgan well-received, well-deserved, the Ohio Harness Horseman's Hall of Fame. His picture will now be on the wall at Scioto Downs with many other great horsemen. As we go to break, let's take time to reflect on those that we lost in 2020. Let us pray. Dear Father, we may not be able to be together in person this evening, but we do not want to miss the opportunity to recognize the champions of our industry and those that served it. We especially want to thank you for Renee and her staff who have worked hard for us to stay informed as to what is happening in the harness industry during this pandemic. The fact that they were able to live stream the races at the county fairs and the qualifiers at the raceway was most appreciated by the owner and the fans. We are thankful that the OHA staff generously donated their time and efforts to help make the live streams possible. They put on a great show, announcing the races, providing interesting information about the horses, drivers, and the venue, and having contests for the listeners. Thank you also for the trainers, drivers, owners, caretakers, and breeders of our standard bred horses. Tonight, we honor those who were responsible for those connected with our 2020 champions. We also thank you, Father, for those who have made this industry one to be proud of. Sadly, we've had to say goodbye to some of these fine people. Could we please have a moment of silence as we remember the special ones?
May God bless all who keep our industry going. May they keep strong and believe in what they are doing and who is helping them through the good and the not so good times. Amen. We are back and we are ready to move on with our program this evening. We want to thank you guys all for being here. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me once again in welcoming Ayers Ratliff. It is now my privilege to induct Dancing Yankee into the Ohio Standard Bread Hall of Fame. Beth Yance bred the son of Yankee Cruiser and danced with the best. During his 10-year racing career, Dancing Yankee recorded 80 career wins and over $2 million in earnings. He is a two-time world champion and owns a lifetime best of 147 and two, taken at Pocono Downs. He is the three-time Ohio Older Pacer of the Year. This spring, Dancing Yankee will begin his next career as a sire and will stand his first season at Coolwinds Farm and begins to further place his mark on the Ohio harness racing scene here in Ohio. Dancing Yankee, has had several ownership groups, but is currently owned by Burke Racing Stable, Weaver Brasimi, Melissa Patterson, and Larry Carr. It is my pleasure to induct Dancing Yankee into the Ohio Standard Bread Hall of Fame. Dancing Yankee by two and a half, and down the stretch they come. Dancing Yankee kicks away. Dancing Yankee, a dazzling effort here. Three, four in front, says goodbye. The Yankee wins. Dancing Yankee.
top of the stretch. It's still dancing Yankee with the edge. Now on the inside, Clear Vision. Looking for a second move here. Clear Vision after dancing Yankee. Clear Vision digging in on the inside. Dancing Yankee fighting hard. Dancing Yankee has enough. Dancing Yankee is a very special horse. Uh, not only has he been probably one of the nicest horses to be around, he's a beautiful animal that has done well for many trainers and has basically been the horse in Ohio for four or five years in a row. He was the top age pacer. So, you know, we're very appreciative of this and uh, look forward. Hopefully he'll continue his ex excellence as a sire. And now we've come to the time of the evening that most of you have been waiting for. It's time for our horse awards. And here to present the horse awards this evening are John Kineski and Sanina Esty. Before we get into the awards for these fine, outstanding equine athletes, there's a couple of things that I think we need to pay attention to. First of all, a great big thank you needs to go out to all of the people who made 2020 racing a possibility and allowed these horses to show off their, their abilities. Our, the racetracks for working with our people to make this happen. The horsemen for going through the racing process and then paying attention to the protocols that we needed to pay attention to in order to keep racing. And most of all, our staff that worked tirelessly to assure that all the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed and made this happen. Uh, they deserve a great big thank you from everyone involved in racing this year. The second thing we need to pay attention to is our PACER. This is our, act, our political action committee that is very, very important because there's a lot of shortfalls in budgets around the state this year and people are going to be looking for ways to fill those budget gaps. Our program is very healthy and we need to keep it that way and we need to make Pacers strong, even stronger than it was this year to make sure that we do have racing in the future. Now, let's get to the awards for the, the horses of the year. The first category is two-year-old pacing colt of the year. This year's winner is Charlie May. He is sired by McCardle out of the damn Stipple Hanover. He was owned and bred by Don Tiger and trained by Steve Carter. In 2020, Charlie May had nine starts, seven wins, two seconds, and earnings of $328,627. This year's two-year-old pacer of the year, Charlie May. Charlie May and Brett Miller, they had it from the get-go. Drawing away, Charlie May. Charlie May comes to the outside and here's the battle we expected. Heart of Chewbacca, the leader. Charlie May closing on the outside. Stride for stride, nose to nose. Charlie May on the outside, heart of Chewbacca. Charlie May looked him in the eye and went right on by. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank my fellow colleagues as I um, accept the award for Charlie May for two-year-old Colt Pacer of the Year. The best honor that you can get is when your peers vote you at an award like this. And I can say uh, with the utmost uh, certainty, this is uh, the greatest achievement I've had in the harness racing game. Uh, it's been a dream season. And uh, to get here from where we started with Homebred is just absolutely amazing. So I want to especially thank Steve Carter, Dustin Bothman, Ben Lindsay, the guys at Carter Stables uh, for the, the wonderful job they did with uh, Charlie May. Um, it's very humbling to win an award like this to be the best of your generation. And uh, it's just a treat and privilege 
A couple years ago, I came very close to winning a ward like this similar in Pennsylvania. I had an old class horse named Sam Hill that uh, folks started coming up to me as the year was ending and saying, I think Sam Hill's going to win horse of the year for the Meadows. And uh, it got me thinking. I got very excited. And due to technicality, his name actually got left off the ballot. So uh, I never thought I'd get another chance to win something like this. So uh, Charlie May, his award also um, vindicates Sam Hill. So I'd like to mention Sam Hill, John Sullivan, Greg Wright Jr., and all those guys uh, for um, and they share this award with uh, Charlie May for sure. So also as far as this award goes, I think the most interesting and exciting thing about it is this is the first horse that I uh, bred. And uh, obviously um, to have this success is amazing. Years ago, a couple years ago, there was a horse called Two Obi-Wan Kenobi. There was two young ladies that owned the horse. Uh, I saw them in a paddock at Scioto. They were very excited. I think it was probably one of the legs of the sire stakes and uh, they had won. And then I obviously been going to the races over here in Ohio since the mid eighties. I used to watch, watch a horse called Thunder's Image. And then I really got hooked on Ohio side horses with Majestic Osborne, who I believe won as a two and a three year old, uh, the, uh, the Sire Stakes final. But I remember sitting there back in 2018, watching two Obi-Wan Kenobi win and seeing those two ladies, how excited they were. And uh, at that point in time, I was kind of dreaming. I was like, maybe one day that'll happen to me. And sure enough, two years later, here I am. So again, just a dream season. I just want to thank everybody in Ohio for voting for Charlie. And uh, on behalf of the stable and everybody, a sincere thanks. The 2022-year-old Philly Pacer of the Year is Summer Touch. By Well Said, out of Real Touch, owner Burke Racing Stable, Knox Services, Slaughter Racing Stable, Weaver Brashemi. The breeder is Knox Services, Slaughter Racing, Raymond Tom Paver. The trainer, Ron Burke. She's a world champion, Ohio Triple Crown winner, and in 2020, with seven starts, six wins, one second, earnings of $285,550. The margin to start now to lengthen by Summer Touch by a length and a half. Racing third, Winella Hanover, sentimental on the outside foot. Ball Diamond three wide, up the turn. Into the stretch, it's all Summer Touch as Chris Page pleases. He's like a statue. Summer Touch with the lead. Rainy Day Chick still trying. Lever Wild center of the track is closing. It is Summer Touch. Gate to wire to win it. Summer Touch. Hey, thank you very much for the award for Summer Touch. Uh, she did a great job this year. You know, I got to thank the breeders and co-owners, Knox Services. They, uh, you know, continuously send us great horses. They, you know, give us a chance to do well right off the bat. And, uh, you know, she was very special this year. She, uh, by the end of the year, had really become a top filly. And next year, I think she'll be a grand circuit horse. The next category is the two-year-old trotting colt of the year. This year's winner is Street Gossip, sired by Cash Hall out of the mare, the Young Princess owned by Carl Howard and Jess Merle Stable, bred by the Morrisville College Foundation. Trained by Virgil Morgan Jr. In 2020, this horse had eight starts, four wins, two seconds, two thirds, and winnings in excess of $171,000. It's all street gossip and Roger Hughes Jr. And this baby's pouring it on as he opens up by 27. Joe's on my feet second. Big Rig and Joe's third. Down the lane. Put a ring around. Street gossip. Showing his heels to the field. Eighth of a mile to go. Street gossip. Out comes Tango with me. Street gossip. 
prevails. Street Gossip, we just want to thank everybody uh, who voted for him. Uh, uh, Steve Finkelstein and Carl Howard, uh, two great owners that are thrilled to race here in Ohio, especially in the Sire Stakes program. Um, can't thank everybody enough from blacksmith to vet, um, driver, Rhett Miller did a great job and uh, it was a pleasure to train him. Thanks a lot. The 2022 year old Philly Trotter of the Year, Marianne by Southwind Spirit out of Witty Girl. Owner is Burke Racing Stable, Knox Services, Weaver Brashemi, breeder is Knox Services. The trainer is Ron Burke. 2020, there was eight starts, five wins and two seconds, earnings of $245,200. As they come to the top of the stretch, and with the lead, it's Marianne. Marianne has opened up now on him by four, moving into second. I'm a lovely lady, Marianne to win. Come to the top of the stretch with the lead, Marianne. Celebrate with me on the outside is digging in and closing. It's Marianne. Celebrate with me still trying on the outside is a digging in, closing and inching closer. It's Marianne, Marianne to win it. Thank you for the award for Mary Ann. Again, Knox Services is the breeder. And, uh, you know, it's the same family as Mission Accepted in Woodyville. So they're, you know, become an Ohio stalwart family. Uh, you know, she set a world record this year at Northfield. We're very proud of her. And uh, we look for her to be better yeah. next year and maybe move on to the Grand Circuit. Our next category is the three-year-old pacing colt of the year. This year's winner is Ocean Rock, sired by Rockin' Amadeus out of the dam, Ocean Pearl. This horse is owned and bred by Sandra Burnett and trained by Christy Noble. This horse is a an Ohio Triple Crown winner and a world champion with a record of 151 and one. In 2020, this horse had 10 starts, six wins, two seconds, one third, and winnings in excess of $363,000. to go in Ohio. Ocean Rock at his best. Comes home by five and a half. Ocean Rock, Dan Noble, look at the timer! Into the stretch. It's Ocean Rock by two as they make the turn. Elber Hanover trying to kick in gear with Stanford Court on the outside. It's Ocean Rock with the lead. Ocean Rock to win it. Thank you for choosing Ocean Rock as three-year-old Colt Pacer of the Year. Uh, we would like to thank his owner, Sandra Burnett, her son, Jim. I'd like to thank all my caretakers and crew at the barn, my second trainers, my husband, Dan, and everybody involved with the source. He's very special to us. Uh, he's the first foal out of Ocean Pearl who Dan's father trained the year right before he passed. And to have him in our barn and him become this caliber of horse has just been a blessing to everybody involved. And again, thank you to everyone who voted. The 2020 three-year-old Philly Pacer of the Year is Pen Paper Page. She's by Pet Rock out of Park Lane Page. The owner and breeder is Shirley Levin. Trainer is Jeff Smith. In 2020, with 12 starts, four wins, three seconds, two thirds, Earnings of $250,080. With 
Less than a 16th to go. They're on the way home in Delaware, Ohio. Pen Paper Page set down up top, but here's Real Rock and Robbie on the outside. Pen Paper Page, Real Rock and Robbie. Those two hit the wire together. Comes pen paper page and rock and go. BB from far back trying to rally into it. Into the stretch. It's Artful Dancer outside. Here comes pen paper page. Pen paper page on the outside is getting the lead. Pen paper page to win it. I'm here to accept the award for the three-year-old filly of the year, Pin Paper Page, for uh, Shirley LeVan. Uh, I greatly appreciate her giving me the opportunity to train the mayor. And I'd also like to thank uh, Henry and Judy Lunsford because they actually raised the mayor for Shirley. And uh, uh, they trained her down to around 15 or so, then sent her up to me to finish off and everything. And uh, they uh, actually deserve... Uh, some credit on this too, because they uh, did a good job of raising her and getting her down to uh, bring to me. I'd like to thank the grooms too also for uh, doing the job that they've done, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the year that we've had. So, And I'd also like to thank my son, Tyler. He's done an excellent job with her uh, as far as driving and everything, and I greatly appreciate it. He deserves actually all the credit because if it wasn't for him getting around there she wouldn't have never got there next we have the three-year-old trotting colt of the year <clears throat> action uncle sired by uncle peter out of the damn action broadway owned by carl howard joyce mcclellan and larry wills bred by kenneth summer and trained by virgil morgan jr this horse is not only an ohio triple crown winner but a world champion with a mark of 152 and four. In 2020, he had 10 starts with nine wins, one second, and earnings of almost $352,000. More than an eight to go, and Action Uncle opens up on Buxton. Yanks dug out his third. Only question now is what's the timer going to say? Eighth of a mile to go in Ohio. Action Uncle coming home. Brett Miller, it's all Action Uncle by five. It's Action Uncle, he digs in, Brent says go, and he is gone. Action Uncle to win it. Action Uncle. Accepting this award for my wife, Joyce McClellan, and the two co-owners, Carl Howard, and Larry Wills, I would like to accept this award in their behalf on Action Uncle. Action Uncle was purchased in the fall of 2019 with two new owners for my wife and I, Carl Howard and Larry Wills. And as you can see by his winnings this year, we've had a great year. Action Uncle, as most of you know, broke a bone in his foot right before the breeder's crown and we'd plan on supplementing into that race. We, what we hope to do is leave Action Uncle off for one year and bring him back in the year 2022. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go and continue his winning ways. I just want to thank everybody for voting for Action Uncle for a three-year-old Colt Trot of the Year. A uh, very special horse and uh, uh, just couldn't be thrilled more for uh, Joyce and Dick McClellan, uh, Carl Howard and Larry Wills, three, three four great owners and, uh, uh, for the state of Ohio and uh, couldn't be happier for them. Um, uh, thanks to Brett Miller uh, for driving him his three-year-old season and his two-year-old season. Uh, just, just couldn't ask for a better drive, uh, driver for him 
and uh, thanks to all the people involved, blacksmith, the groom, Brian Southward, um, my vets, uh, Dr. Bob Buell, um, everybody involved. Uh, thanks, thanks very much for voting for Action Uncle. The 2020 three-year-old Philly Trotter of the Year is Guinevere Hall by Cash Hall out of Garbo Hall. Owner, M.T. Pocket Stables, David McDuffie. The breeder is Alan Levitt. Trainer, Melanie Wren. She's a world champion, Ohio Triple Crown winner, and in 2020 with 13 starts, eight wins, two seconds, earnings of $356,972. Eighth of a mile to go. The leader, Guinevere Hall, brings him into the stretch. Tootie on the outside, coming to the wire. It's Guinevere Hall, a perfect eight for eight. Less than an eight to go. Into the stretch, a pansy face has the lead. Guinevere Hall closing on the outside with every stride. Coming to the wire, Guinevere Hall remains undefeated. Seven for seven, an Ohio Sire State champion, Guinevere Hall. Uh, thank you very much. Peter and I would uh, especially like to thank David McDuffie and Ron Ruggles for allowing us to train such a special filly. Um, we'd also uh, like to thank Danielle Copeland, who did an amazing job taking care of this filly all season and keeping her rolling through an undefeated season. Um, part of me would like to say thank you to um, Gene Oldford, who I think helped guide her. He was an, an original owner on Guinevere Hall and he passed away um, early on in her two-year-old season, even before she raced. Um, we had a great time racing this filly all season. She was slightly tough to manage, but when she got to the races, it was game on, and um, she just kept winning, and uh, we're very fortunate to win this award and to have had such a nice filly. The 2020 Aged Pacer of the Year is Section Line Big Rye, sired by Pet Rock, out of the mare Aquatic Yankee, Owned by Harold Lee Botter, bred by Mr. Botter, Michael Dixon, and Harold L. Botter. He was trained by Steve Botter. In 2020, this horse had 19 starts, 8 wins, 3 seconds, 1 third, and $181,000 in earnings. Lifetime, this horse has $572,000 to prove that he is there every year. Congratulations. And the Gene Rago at section line, big ride, rock and speed on the outside, rock and motion through the lane, coming to the wire, section line, big ride, rock and speed, section line, big ride. To the top of the stretch in the Myron Charna President's Pace, and they've got Black Hole to catch. Section line Big Rye now moves to the outside. It is Black Hole. Section line Big Rye is coming at him and coming on. These two will decide it. Section line Big Rye. I would like to thank you for Big Rise 2020 Age Pacer of the Year. I would like to thank Tyler Smith for driving the horse, Steve Bowder as trainer, and the groom, Joy, and anyone else has came to watch him in 2020. The 2020 Age Trotter of the Year is Pass the Vape by DeJarmbro out of Vapor Rises. Owner and breeder is Lionel Ray Wadiker. Trainer is Derek Wadiker. In 2020, with 24 starts, eight wins, two seconds, and two thirds, in excess earnings of 109,000, lifetime earnings, $460,321.
It's Fnatic with the lead, past the vape, right alongside as they come to the stretch. Fnatic, past the vape, is right there, puts a nose in front, and past the vape is getting up to win it. Past the vape from Fnatic. to go in Ohio. Pass the vape and Mike Wilder open up. Closing on the outside, Fanatic racing third, Buckshot Man showing the heels to the field. Pass the vape and Mike Wilder. I'm here to accept the Ohio Age Trotter of the Year Award for Pass the Vape uh, for my dad, Lana Wadaker. We'd like to thank the Ohio horsemen and women for the award. An award that is voted on by your peers is always a good award. It shows your on-track accomplishments that reflects your off-track work. Uh, we'd like to thank, a special thanks to Caretaker of the Year, Andre Nard. Uh, special thanks to my dad for everything that he does, uh, both drivers. They gave us back-to-back -back championship wins, Mike Wilder and Dan Noble. And thank you to Chris Page and Trevor Smith for keeping them in contention this year. Uh, good luck to you guys in 2021. I've got the distinct honor of presenting the, the 2020 Horse of the Year. This year we had multiple Triple Crown winners and the voting was extremely close. And that's primarily because of what quality we now have in, in the state of Ohio. This year's 2020 Horse of the Year. A little more than an eight to go, and Action Uncle opens up on Buxton. Yanks dug out as third. Only question now is what's the timer gonna say? Eighth of a mile to go in Ohio. Action Uncle coming home. Brett Miller, it's all Action Uncle. By five! It's Action Uncle, he digs in, Brent says go, and he is gone. Action Uncle to win it. Action Uncle. Thank you very much for selecting Action Uncle, the 2020 Horse of the Year. For my wife, Joyce, my partners, Carl Howard and Larry Wills, great honor to at least to have accepted this award in his behalf. Action Uncle proved to be a great horse this year, setting world records at three tracks. Thank you so much for uh, voting for Action Uncle for Horse of the Year. Um, you know, uh, just uh, a lot of good candidates. Uh, we had a lot of good Ohio breads this year, and for him to achieve that and, and win that, uh, uh, I can't thank everybody enough. I want to thank the owners, Joyce and Dick McClellan, Larry Wills and Carl Howard, um, four great owners uh, for Ohio, and uh, they love the sport. They're passionate about it, and uh, stuff like this uh, makes it makes it even better. Uh, it's a little special for me because I trained his mom, um, and uh, you know she was successful, Dan Patch Award winner. But uh, he's definitely uh, a double world record holder, has a special place in my heart, and I uh, uh, want to thank everybody for voting for Action Uncle for Horse of the Year. At this time, it's my distinct honor to present Ann Lufkin, who will present the painting of the Horse of the Year. Good evening, all. It is always an honor to do the Horse of the Year painting. Action Uncle is a special horse. Carl, Joyce, and Larry, you made the right choice. Virgil's training and Brett's driving made it special. I miss being able to see the racing this year, but with OHHA's YouTube coverage and Brad Conrad's photos, I was able to see and feel the races. Hope you enjoy this painting for years to come. This work in progress will be ready to ship very soon. Folks, we want to thank you all for joining us for this banquet. Like I say, it's been very, very different than we've done it in years past. We hope you enjoyed it. Congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations to all of our horsemen who have done such a great job working through this pandemic. And next year, let's do it in Columbus because Bateson, 
I want a bourbon. Good night, everybody. <laughs>